Continuation, Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 1, Chapter 1 to B1, Speaking to Oneself According to the Word of God, page 48. Paul tells us we must speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns. This is done by meditation. The Hebrew word for meditation is haga, which means to ponder by talking to oneself. David tells us, Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates, ponders by talking to himself, day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Christian meditation is not voiding the mind, but using scriptures to talk to oneself, speaking to our own life, our business, our children, our family, our future and our own body, what the Word of God says about us. We need to confess what the Word of God says about us. We will not expand on this, for we already have the Bible study on the power of confession. So, according to David, this is the way one channels those spiritual rivers of living water out of that underground river of the Holy Ghost in him to the surface. When one does it, there will always be fruits on his tree. The leaves shall be green. The leaves are for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22 verse 2. So, not only will he have abiding health himself, but people will also come to him for healing, since the leaves on him are evergreen, and they are for the healing of the nations. People will see the fruit of the Spirit on him. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23. That is why Jesus told us, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Therefore by their fruits you shall know them. Matthew 7 verse 16 to 20 You and I must learn to speak to ourselves. David did that often. For instance, when he was down, he spoke to himself. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted in me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Psalm 42 verse 5 God himself told Joshua the secret of speaking to oneself according to the scriptures, saying, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate, ponder by talking to yourself therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Joshua 1 verse 8 so we must know the Word of God, meditate on the Word, confess the Word, and become a doer of the Word, not a hearer only, deceiving ourselves. Chapter 1, 2, B2 Praying and singing with understanding and in the Spirit Therefore be filled with the Spirit, and the way you do it is by speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Ephesians 5 verse 18 to 21 By speaking to yourselves in spiritual songs, Paul does not mean songs that you sing with understanding. For psalms are originally songs and they were written under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, so they are spiritual, not carnal. 
but by spiritual songs Paul means singing in tongues or singing in the Spirit. Paul says, For if I pray or sing in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays or sings, but my understanding is unfruitful. I will pray with the Spirit or in tongues, and I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit or in tongues or sing spiritual songs, and I will sing with the understanding also. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 15 So by speaking in tongues and singing in tongues, you are being filled with the Spirit. What is happening is that the rivers of living water that are in you are brought onto the surface to bring life to your mortal body and change your life and circumstances. Many people think that when they pray and sing in tongues, it has to be loud. Paul says, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. We have already done a Bible study on the seven Hebrew words of praise in which we give a succinct understanding of what praise and worship means. Please revisit that Bible study to refresh your understanding on that subject. The truth is, if one does not have the knowledge of the perfect redemption plan of God, it will be difficult to praise God, for one does not know why he has to praise God. But Paul tells us through the Holy Ghost, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I knew about the seven Hebrew words of praise, but I found it difficult to praise God always. But now that I have the understanding of the perfect redemption plan of God, I find it is becoming easier every day to praise the Lord than before I knew the perfect redemption plan of God. Many Christians spend their time always asking God for things they have already freely received in the perfect redemption plan of God. But when you know that all things are already yours, you spend more time praising God, for He has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 Your time of prayer becomes a time of fellowship with God, not only a list of requests. You do not need to sing to get His glory to fall upon you, for He has glorified you with the same glory He gave Jesus, and Jesus has given you that same glory. Romans 8 verse 30 and John 17 verse 22 Your time of praise and worship is not manipulation time to try to have God do something for you, but you praise Him because it is flowing out of your heart for what He has already done, though you do not see its manifestation yet. You know God is not a man that He should lie, nor a son of man that He should change His mind. Numbers 23 verse 19 God wanted to have true fellowship with us. He did not want us to relate to Him only when we need something from Him. Thus, when He gave us Jesus, He also gave us all things. Therefore, all His promises in Christ Jesus are yes and amen to the glory of God the Father through us. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 Now be careful or anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Philippians 4 verse 6 When I was growing up in my parents' house, we knew and believed that everything was already ours. There were things they already told us we do not need to ask them for, like food, medication, schooling and clothing. We knew their answer was always yes. So, when they were not around, we would help ourselves. When it came to things that we were not sure of, we asked them, and they gave us the answer, either it was yes or no. So, most of the time we spent with our parents was not asking them for things, but enjoying their presence and enjoying working with them in the house and in the vegetable garden. We would tell them what we did at school, how we supervised works they entrusted to us, etc., I understood that God was better than my parents according to Matthew 7 verse 7 to 11, but I simply did not know how. But when I found the perfect redemption plan of God, I knew how. 
so I do not spend my time begging my Father in heaven to do things for me, but I simply let him know my requests and thank him, because he said all his promises are yes and amen, because I am in Christ. I do not sing for an hour before letting him know my troubles. I let him know them straight away, and I thank him because he said I am more than a conqueror through God who loves me. Romans 8 verse 37 When you read all the epistles in the New Testament, they use the past tense to talk about the promises of God through Christ Jesus because they understood the perfect redemption plan of God and that all things have already been freely given unto each one of us who are in Christ. My prayer times are more about the business of the kingdom like Jesus told us. I must be about my Father's business. Luke 2 verse 49 I talk to him about what I have learnt in the scriptures. I talk to him about the people around me who are being transformed by his word out of my mouth, people who are being healed by him through me. And he talks back to me and we just enjoy our time together for hours. I never run out of a topic with God. I pray with understanding and in the Spirit. I sing with understanding and in the Spirit. And he tells me what is in his heart and the two of us agree on what should be done. And I pray for what is in the heart of God according to the Scriptures concerning people's life, concerning nations. Sometimes the Lord comes and gives me a new cooking recipe and I run into the kitchen and I start cooking and as I cook he starts telling me about many prophecies in the Bible where he used food to give important messages to his people. So I truly enjoy my time with God. I remember one day he gave me the cooking recipe of food from Indonesia and I cooked it. My friend who's from Indonesia came and he told me that it is a recipe his grandmother passed down to his mother. So we both ate it and we talked in length about Indonesia and I discovered he was a Christian too. People will tell me, Jerry, I do not have the same fellowship that you have with God. You make it look like the Father, the Son Jesus and the Holy Ghost are your friends. Why do I not have the same relationship with the Godhead? Let me explain simple things to you. I remember one day I was walking up to a church at the prayer time. I was singing on my way. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. And Jesus told me, Do my commandments. So I sang again. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. And Jesus told me, Do my commandments. So the Holy Ghost now brought to my remembrance what Jesus told every born-again Christian. If you love me, keep or do my commandments. John 14 verse 15 If you do or keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept or done my Father's commandments, abide in his love. John 15 verse 10 Living a sanctified life is very important to hearing the voice of God and enjoying fellowship with the Godhead. In Exodus 19, God asked the people to sanctify themselves and he would come in their midst and talk with them. They did it for three days and God came in their midst and talked with them from heaven. In Exodus 24, they sanctified themselves again and God came in their midst and talked with them and they ate and drank in the presence of God. Nobody was to go on that mountain to talk to God if he or she had not sanctified himself or herself. Judas said unto Jesus, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. John 14, verse 22 to 23. Moses lived a sanctified life, and he could go on that mountain to talk with God every day. God the Father, Jesus and the Holy Spirit want to come to you and dine with you too. You must be willing to live a sanctified life if you want to enjoy your fellowship with the Godhead. Love is an action word and verb. It must be demonstrated by actions, not mere words. Paul tells us, 
God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 verse 8 Jesus tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in Jesus should not perish but have eternal life. John 3 verse 16 Jesus, while on earth, abode in the love of his Father who sent him by keeping or doing his commandments, and thus demonstrated by his actions that he loves the Father. Jesus wants us to demonstrate our love too, if we truly know him. By this we know the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. 1 John 3 verse 16 what commandments did Jesus keep or do to demonstrate his love for the Father? First, Jesus lived a sanctified life for our sake, so that we can take him as an example of sanctification. John 17, verse 16 to 19, and Hebrews 1, verse 8 to 9. Second, he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God to get people's souls saved so that they would receive eternal life and not go to hell. Matthew 4, verse 17, Matthew 10, verse 7 to 8. Third, Jesus made disciples out of those people he got saved. John 4, verse 1 to 2, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Fourth, Jesus destroyed the works of the devil by setting people free from sin, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, etc., 1 John 3 verse 8 and Acts 10 verse 38 If we say we love Jesus, let us not just sing about it, but go and demonstrate that we love him by keeping his commandments. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. John 17 verse 16 to 19 As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. Matthew 10, verse 7 to 8. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, verse 8. And Jesus came and spoke unto them his disciples, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. You go therefore, Teach all nations, make disciples of nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 I also remember I was singing, I am a friend of God, I am a friend of God, he calls me friend. And Jesus told me, I, Jesus, am the friend of every born-again Christian, yet some born-again Christians do not treat me as their friend, though they say and sing that they are my friends. I said, Lord, I do not understand. And the Holy Spirit brought scriptures to my remembrance. Mary, the mother of Jesus, said to the servants, Whatever Jesus says unto you, do it. John 2 verse 5 So, if we are serving our elder brother Jesus, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, whatever he says unto us, we must do it. Now Jesus tells us, You are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I do not call you servants, for the servant does not know what his Lord does, but I have called you friends, because all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. John 15 verse 14 to 15 So, 
when we are not doing whatsoever Jesus commands us, though we are born again, Jesus is our elder brother, our saviour, and he is our friend, but we are not reciprocating his friendship toward us. The same thing also when we sing of Jesus being our King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus tells us, You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. John 13, verse 13. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say, bid or command? Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings, biddings and commandments, and does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man who built a house and dug deep and laid the foundation on a rock. The rock of hearing and doing the saying, bidding and commandments of Jesus. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and it could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he who hears and does not do is like a man who without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Luke 6 verse 46 to 49. So Jesus is asking us the same thing. Why do you sing and profess that I am your King, your Lord, that you are my friend, that you love me, yet you are not doing what I say, what I bid you and what I commanded you? So instead of merely singing about being friends of God and friends of Jesus, about Jesus being our King and Lord, we need to prove it by doing whatsoever he commands us. What Jesus commands every born-again Christian is simple. It is summed up in one commandment. Jesus tells us, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. John 13 verse 34 the series of the Perfect Redemption Plan tells us succinctly how Jesus demonstrated his love toward us. We need to embrace it and go and love our fellow humans the same way. We can break that commandment into four commandments. First, live a sanctified life for the sake of the people around you and for your own sake. For without holiness, nobody will see God. Hebrews 12 verse 14 Second, preach the gospel of the kingdom of God to get people's souls saved so that they will receive the same Jesus you have and eternal life and not go to hell. Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20. Third, make disciples out of those people you get saved. John 4 verse 1 to 2, Matthew 28 verse 20. Fourth, Destroy the works of the devil by setting people free from the bondage of sin, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, etc. 1 John 3 verse 8 2 Peter 2 verse 19 1 Peter 3 verse 31 to 36 Acts 10 verse 38 and Matthew 10 verse 7 to 8 just do the same works Jesus who sent us did when his Father sent him as Jesus told us. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he who believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. John 14 verse 12 Love and friendship must be reciprocated. We should not only be on the receiving end and never give anything back to God. Please read the Bible study on the heart of a son or daughter who is serving his or her father and is his or her father's friend. The love and the friendship of God, Jesus and the Holy Ghost toward us are unconditional. Let us respond to that love and friendship of the Godhead accordingly. If you do not embrace the sanctified life of Jesus, meaning becoming doer of the word, you will not be able to become a doer of the works of Jesus. John 17 verse 16 to 19, Hebrews 1 verse 8 to 9, James 1 verse 22 to 25, John 14 verse 6, 
John 4 verse 34 and John 14 verse 12 to 14. Jesus says, He who has my commandments and keeps or does them, it is he who loves me. Do not deceive yourself that you love me, or that you are my friend, when you are not keeping or doing my commandments. Though I love you and I am your friend, for not the hearers only and the confessors only, but the doers, for confession and faith without works or demonstration of what we confess is dead, vain and useless according to James 1 verse 22 and James 2 verse 20. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. John 14 verse 21. So now you understand why God manifests himself more to some people than others, gives some people more revelation than other people. It is simply because they are doers of the commandments of God, thus God enjoys their company. That love and friendship are reciprocal or mutual. They do not just try to use God to get what they want, but they truly care about God and his heart desires. Judas thought that the Godhead was being partial by manifesting themselves more to some people than others. Judas said unto Jesus, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loves me, he will keep or do my words, and my Father will love him, and we, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, will come unto him and make our abode with him. John 14, verse 22 to 23. God is not partial. He wants you to have the same relationship the early disciples had with the Godhead. The Lord God says to you and me, Why is your countenance fallen? And why are you angrily envious of the way we manifest ourselves to some born-again Christians who demonstrate their love and friendship for us? If you do well, if you do what every born-again Christian is commanded, Will you not be accepted and enjoy the same things? Genesis 4 verse 6 to 7 We have seen in the Bible study of Jehovah Shammah in the series of the Perfect Redemption Plan that the God it dwells in us, just like a husband and a wife can dwell under the same roof and sleep in the same bed, yet they do not communicate with each other, they are not close, they are growing apart, there is no fellowship or communion, no intimacy. We are married to Jesus and live under the same roof. It is high time to reciprocate his love and friendship for us. John tells us it is the will of the Godhead for you and me to have the same manifestations of the Godhead in our life the disciples of Jesus had. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. 1 John 1 verse 1 to 3 Many times the devil and some religious people will be accusing you that you do not love God enough, that you are not the friend of God, because you are not attending all their religious activities. Do not listen to the devil and his religious agents. If you are doing what Jesus commanded you, first, living a sanctified life or a life of holiness, so that you yourself will see God in heaven and not be cast into hell as a worker of iniquity, Luke 13, verse 24 to 28. Second, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God to get people's souls saved so that they will receive eternal life and not go to hell. Third, making disciples out of those people you get saved. And fourth, destroying the works of the devil by setting people free from the bondage of sin, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, etc., do not listen to the devil and those religious people. You are the true friend of God and you are the one who truly loves him.
It is time for born-again Christians to flee from religious spirits that build so many activities in church and do not equip people for the work of the ministry. When we read Acts 4, the disciples prayed according to the scriptures, Psalm 2 and Luke records for us. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Acts 4 verse 31 You see, Jesus already told us the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. John 6 verse 63 so we need to spend time reading, studying, confession, sharing and meditating on the Word of God to be continually filled with the Spirit of God. And we need to pray according to the Word of God to be continually filled with the Spirit of God. The disciples here were being threatened by the Jewish leaders, but they decided to stand on Psalm 2 and pray according to that Word of God. A spiritual prayer is a prayer based on the Word of God. That is why Paul tells us, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, so that you will be able to teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3 verse 16 This was the way the disciples of Jesus were continually being filled with the Spirit of God and overflowing with the Spirit. The apostles told the brethren, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, Acts 6 verse 4. So, since we ought to be continually filled with the Spirit of God until rivers of living water flow out of our belly, we ought to do these things recommended to us by the apostles of Jesus. Let us stop here for a second. If you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues, which is the first sign of the infilling of the Holy Ghost, this is your day. I want you to lay your hand on your head and pray this prayer out loud. And after you have prayed it, open your mouth and speak whatever comes out of your mouth. Your mind may tell you you do not understand what you are saying, it is normal. Keep speaking again and again. Do not stop. Pray at least for one hour in tongues. The first time I opened my mouth and prayed in tongues, my carnal mind was telling me, Gee, now it is official, you have lost your mind. And I remember I had tears running down my cheeks, for I did not know what I was saying, and I am a person who wants to understand everything, but that tongue thing, I could not understand it. The Lord told me, You have already given people prophecies, so that is part of the manifestations of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. For in Acts 2, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues, and they prophesied. You have been having dreams and visions. That is also the evidence of the outpouring of my Spirit upon you, like Joel prophesied and Peter said in Acts 2, that it was a fulfillment of that prophecy of Joel. You are comfortable with prophesying dreams and visions because you understand them in part, but you are not comfortable with tongues because your intellect is resisting it. So I made up my mind I wanted all that Jesus died on the cross for me, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues is part of it. I prayed the first day by faith for fifteen minutes, and everything about me said it was gibberish. But the next day I decided I would pray for one hour in tongues. I made it a discipline at first, because my carnal mind was telling me, Stop praying in the Spirit. You do not understand a single word of it. But I spoke to myself, saying, Self, listen to the word of God. He who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 So I am not speaking to you, self. I am speaking to God. I am speaking mysteries, even hidden truths of God. And the carnal mind cannot receive the things of God. But not me. I have the mind of Christ. That is why I can speak those mysteries. He who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4 
So I am building myself up by praying in tongues. I am repairing the cracks that are in my life by praying in tongues. I am fixing my life from within. As I am praying in tongues, the Spirit of God is helping my weaknesses, for there are situations that my intellect does not know how I ought to pray about them, but the Spirit of the Lord in me knows how He ought to pray about them according to the Word of God. I do not know all the scriptures, but the Spirit of the Lord in me knows all the scriptures, for He is the one who wrote the Bible. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 Thus I pray in the Spirit, because the Spirit knows all the scriptures that address my current situation. He makes intercession for me as I pray in tongues, so it is no longer I who pray, but the Spirit of God is praying through me, according to the scriptures when I pray in tongues. Romans 8 verse 26 to 27 I am building myself up in my most holy faith as I am praying in tongues. Jude 1 verse 20 I do not know how to thank God as I ought to, but as I pray in tongues, the Spirit of the Lord intercedes through me and gives thanks to God well, better than I can do with my little words. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 16 to 17 so, if you do not speak in tongues yet, please lay your hand on your head and pray the simple prayer out loud with me, and then open your mouth and pray in your most holy faith. That is praying in tongues, as Jude tells us. People who have prayed this simple prayer have instantly received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. Some of them even spoke and sang in Arabic, though they have never learnt it, like in Acts 2. Jesus said, Everyone who asks receives. So today is your day to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Luke 11 verse 9 to 13 Say it out loud with me. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. For when Jesus died, I died with him. When he was buried, I was buried with him. And when you raised him from the dead, I was raised from the dead with him. And the same glory that you gave him, he has now given me. I thank you because Jesus already prayed for me to receive the promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire with evidence of speaking in tongues. I thank you because I have the spirit of glory dwelling in me. I thank you because it is your will that I, as a believer in Jesus, must have that spirit of glory resting upon me with evidence of speaking in tongues. Therefore, I open my mouth in faith and speak in tongues. Holy Ghost, come and fill me now with evidence of speaking in tongues. Intercede through me, speak mysteries through me in tongues, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, open your mouth and speak by faith, and keep on speaking. Do it again tomorrow and the next day, and again and again. To be continued. <laughs>